all I do on a day where it looks like it's going to be really hot. Uh, let, let's say it would be May or June and I've got some seedlings there and I mean, there's only so much heat something can take, right? Uh, just pick it up and do that, right? And then I tie it back tight. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. I was just out planting some stuff under my plastic domes and I, I got to thinking about questions people ask me about these domes. And, uh, you know, I think the most common question is uh, how do you keep it from getting too hot under those domes? And, uh, well, I mean, you gotta, when you get up in the morning, you gotta look at the temperature, <laughs> look at the weather and look what's gonna happen. It's not a question of uh, how warm the day's gonna be, it's more how, how sunny it's going to be. Uh, so uh, right off the bat, it's, it's a more complicated answer than you might think. So I mean, right off the bat, where I live, and as you can tell today, it's not a sunny day today. Uh, I think looking at the forecast this week, we might have one sunny day and the rest of the days are supposed to be like this or, or lousier. <laughs> like this or like this with rain <laughs> or snow, <laughs> right? So um, but number one answer is that at least in, uh, you know, March and April, it's really not a big concern where I live. Uh, the, the, the number of days that are extremely sunny and extremely hot are extremely rare. Uh, so I really don't worry about it. Any day where there's any kind of heat, I, I want that getting into my soil. I want these things heating up. Um, so there's that. Number two, uh, none of these are built to, uh, you know, exacting specifications. You know, I would, I, you know, I, I've done, you know, when I was a younger fella, I worked on, a, you know, I basically did painting. I was a painting crew, but sometimes I would help out carpenters and stuff like that. So the point is, none of these plastic domes are made well. There's cracks and holes everywhere. And if I look, if you look at this one here, I can get, right, I can get, get my hand in, right? So they've got, you know, these do not hold the heat as well as a greenhouse. Uh, this is like a very inefficient portable cheaply made, quickly slapped together, <laughs> if I throw that in there, greenhouse, right? Um, so that's another main reason I don't have to worry too much about them overheating because, you know, they, 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 they can't overheat. <laughs> I mean, it can get hot in there, you know, if, you know, there's a couple things I, I leave, you know, I've got um, tomatoes and, uh, uh, not right now, but like uh, in late May, I'll plant tomatoes and eggplant and peppers and some stuff like that. Direct seed it right in the ground underneath these. And with those, I, have to, I do have to be a bit careful because it can get uh, too hot for them. So uh, all I do, I have to tie these down because it gets so windy here, they'll, they'll pick up and blow into the trees otherwise. And I've had that happen. But all I do on a day where it looks like it's gonna be really hot uh, let, let's say it would be May or June and I've got some seedlings there and I mean, there's only so much heat something can take, right? Uh, just pick it up and do that, right? And then I tie it back, tie it down so it doesn't blow away. But just give the heat a way to get out, right? If I, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I do. I just put a, a rock underneath it, make a nice space, right? Uh, so now it can't get, I mean, this works where, for I, am, uh, this works where I am. Right, maybe you need to take the whole thing right off where you are, right? It all depends, you have to, I mean, all these things I do, you have to fine tune them to where you are. I mean, there's lots of people that write in and they say, I can do this and I can do that, and I can't do this and I can't do that. It really depends, I'm very close to the ocean here. It tends to be overcast a lot, so I have to use one set of techniques. If it's extremely sunny where you are all the time and you get a lot of sunny days, then you've got, Option, you, number one, you've got options I don't have here because I'm trying to capture heat, whereas your problem might be too much heat if you're, you know, thinking about the sun as a source of heat. So all these things I'm doing here, you have to uh, modify them to your situation. Um, but yeah, you get up in the morning. I mean, any experienced, skilled gardener, you're always looking at the weather, especially where I live where the weather's so variable, right? I always have to check the weather. I have to make sure, is it going to be super windy? Is everything tied down, right? Is, it, is there going to be a really hard frost? Is it going to get cold? Even if there's going to be a decent rain with not too much wind, I might want to take all these domes off so the rain can get in. I might come out here with my, my son or my daughter and just pop them all off. If it's going to be, you know, really good rain for a couple hours, it just, that's a lot easier than watering the gardens, right? Let all that rain in. Rain, rain has, 
uh, you know, tends to have a bit of nitrogen in it because it gets pulls it out of the air on its way down. It can uh, st sort of stick to the rain <laughs> at the risk of oversimplifying. Rain's the best water. Um, so all these things you're, you know, you're, you're, you are plugged in, you're aware of the weather and what's going to happen tomorrow and the next day, and you're making little adjustments throughout the gardening season. That might sound complicated and a lot of work, but it really isn't. I mean, I got a, you know, uh, 2,500 square foot garden out here. And on your typical weekday, I might be out here. I'm either not out here at all, or I'm out here five, 10 minutes. Um, so five, 10 minutes isn't a lot of work for a 2,500 square foot garden. Uh, you know, today I, I planted a bit of stuff, but you know, uh, you get up in the morning, you look at the weather, you decide if anything needs to be done. If, if it does, you do it, otherwise you, don't worry about it, right? So it's not a lot of work, five or 10 minutes a day, sometimes, right? Five or, five or 10 minutes a day, sometimes, and you can manage a 2,500 square foot garden. Uh, in terms of managing these early in the season, it's really not that big a deal. Um, and the added advantage of getting things going under a dome like this, as I've mentioned before, is that the plants don't need to be hardened off. Right? They've already been getting full, real sun. Right? They can withstand the rays of the sun. They know what it's like to have their roots in cold soil because they were sown into the soil. Right? They know what it's like to get hot during the day and cold at night. They're, they're accustomed to the extremes, whereas if you're having them indoors, they're not. Right? There's disadvantages too, but there's plenty of good reasons to do it this way. And uh, for me, I find it's really not that difficult to keep things from overheating underneath the domes. But again, that's relative to my climate and the sunniness of where I live. And the advantage, you could look at it this way, of my shoddy workmanship and all the different cracks and holes and places where air can get out, right? Not a perfectly closed seal system. Uh, lots of people ask me why I don't um, put the plastic all the way, oh, all the way to the end. Um, and honestly, I, I do it this way because I can get more plastic out of a roll. I'll have to make a video where I make one sometimes to show you that, but you can get more. You know, if you've got a big roll of plastic, you can just use more of it by doing it this way. And you just tie this little end piece on. It's definitely not as tight a system. Lots of heat, heat and, you know, escapes. Um, but, you know, it doesn't seem to... Uh, negatively affect the success of using this approach because uh, I've been doing it for a number of years now and it seems to work just fine. So <laughs> anyway, just a little bit of uh, rambling and, and trying to uh, answer questions about uh, using plastic domes early in the season to, uh, to capture heat and trying to reduce the risk of, uh, or you know, asking questions about the risks of plants overheating. Yes, they can. Uh, you have to keep your eye on the weather and you know if you're I mean, I'm at work all day I'm not I'm not here I have to I literally have to drive I'm, you know I'm gone from the house for about nine ten hours a day every day during the week um, so I have to make a decision before I leave in the morning uh, and if I don't make that decision the plants could get cooked uh, for me it's it's rare because the weather's so um, not sunny here <laughs> well when it happens you just go out and there's nothing nothing I enjoy more than coming out here before breakfast and just doing a couple things for five, 10 minutes. Great way to start the day. So I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, maritimegardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.